Pre-calc chapter 8, section 1. So we're going to look at sequences, um, factor, factorial notation, and summation notation uh, for series. So an infinite sequence is just a pattern. So they have positive integer and terms a1, a2, a3. So these are like the term numbers. This 1, 2, 3 is the term number within the pattern. And then it continues on to an infinite value. So the um, domain could be a non-negative to include 0 if you want to have it be a0, have a 0 term. So the pattern has either start with a 1 or starts with a 0. Typically, we'll start with the first term um, unless stated. A finite sequence, just a pattern that stops. You're only looking at so many terms within a pattern. So here, write the first five terms of this pattern. So this is a formula or an equation that is giving us the pattern. So it's here our n value is the term number. So knowing that n is a term number, to find each term in the pattern, so find the first term here, we just plug 1 in for n and evaluate that. So if we did it for that term 1, we'd have 1 plus a negative 1, which is 0 over 2, which is 0. So a1 is 0. We plugged it in for the second term, so that'd be a2, the second term. It'd be 1 plus a negative 1 squared over 2 times 2, which then you'd have 1 plus positive 1, or 2, over 4, and then 1 half. So a2 is 1 half. And then you can continue that pattern. It wants the first five terms. So sometimes you can just do that mentally. I want to write the first two. If I plugged in 3, then it's going to be 1 plus negative 1 again, 0. It's going to be 0. I do the fourth term, 1 plus negative 1 to the fourth. So now it's 1 plus 1, or 2 over 8, which is going to be 1 fourth. And the fifth one is going to be 0. And so you kind of see the pattern here to help me find the next number if I plugged in 5 there, or plugged in 6 there, I'm going to give, have 2 over 12, which would be 1 6. And so you see the denominator is increasing by 2. So then we can, example here is looking the other way. If I have the pattern written for us, we can then try to write the expression for the nth term. So we're trying to write a formula for the nth term as we're doing. So we first need to look at the pattern. So here, 3 to 7, 7 to 11, 11 to 15, 15 to 19. It's a pretty easy pattern that we're just adding 4. And so what it tells me is that this change between the numbers is constant. And whenever we have a constant rate of change, we should know that as a linear equation. So again, we should be pulling in our basic math, our basic algebra within these contexts. So we have our linear equation of mx plus b where our rate of change is our slope. So for here, it's going to be 4 times n, because we don't use x. We have n be our, uh, our x value, our term number, and then plus our starting value. So this is term 1, this is term 2, this is term 3, this is term 4, and then term 5. Our starting value, our b value, is really for term 0. So if I go backwards, I'm going to find that this would have been negative 1. So it would be 4n minus 1 would have been the expression for this pattern. So now this works for any n terms. So if I plugged in 5 there, you'd see 4 times 5 is 20. Minus 1, I would get this 19. So you can check it to make sure it works for all of these values that are in the pattern. A more complicated one would be this one because it's 1 going positive, negative, positive, negative. And then 2, it's much harder to see because it's not a constant rate of increase. So to help me out that way, it's not the same, I'll look at the term numbers, term 1 to term 2, term 2 to term 9, term 3 to term uh, to 28, term 4 to 65, and try to figure out how in the world are these related. Instead of going from uh, the previous term to the next term, we're actually going from the term number to the term value, and that's really what you should be doing to try to find the formulas. And so if I go 1 to 2, 2 to 9, 3 to 28, 4 to 65, 5 to 126, just looking at the numbers, ignoring the sign, um, we're looking at the n value. And if we cube it, so like 5 cubed is 125, it's one more. 4 cubed is 64, one more. 3 cubed is 27, one more. So I'm going to add 1 to that. That's how you could find the actual new, the, the absolute value of, these, of this pattern. But we still have a negative to deal with. The negative could be created in this pattern 
just by multiplying by a negative 1. And so we want to multiply by a negative 1, but we don't want the first term to be multiplied by negative 1. We want the um, first term to be multiplied by a positive 1. So we're going to raise this to a power of n, the term number, minus 1. And we could have done n plus 1. It would have worked because n here is 1. So if I add 1 to that or subtract 1, I go to an even power. So negative 1 to an even power is positive. So then if I multiply by positive, that term would stay positive. Then the 2... So 2 minus 1 is an odd number. Now I'm going to be multiplied by a negative. So that's like kind of a, a little nifty way to deal with when the signs are um, keep flipping. So you're multiplying by negative 1 to a power. The recursive sequence is, is how we typically think of patterns. Um, and it's defining using the previous term. When we write equations, we like to think about it writing for the nth term like we did in this previous example. Recursive is typically how we see the pattern, even though it doesn't help us use a whole lot when you write out the, uh, the definition for the pattern. So Fibonacci is a, a famous recursive sequence. So notice how it defines the zero term as one, the first term as one, and then every k term after it is defined by using the k minus two, which is the two terms previous to the k term, plus a k one, which means the term previous to k. One term previous to k and then two terms previous to k. We're just adding those together. And so if a1 is, or a0 is 1, if a1 is 1, a2, a2 is going to be found by adding the two previous terms. So 1 plus 1 would be 2. a3 is adding the two previous terms. So 2 plus 1 is 3. And that continues on. 3 plus 2 would be 5. 5 plus 3 is 8. 8 plus 5 is 13, and that pattern continues on. This is Fibonacci's pattern, which is a very famous uh, recursive sequence or recursive pattern to talk about. Factorials, it should be a review of previous math. When you see this notation, n exclamation point, it means you're multiplying the number n times every number previous to it all the way to 1. So you can also define it as 1 times 2 times 3 all the way up to n, uh, all the integers. Note that if you have the zero factorial, it's equal to one. Kind of make that up to make sure all the other math is going to hold true. So an example here, two times four factorial is the same thing as two times, and then four factorial is four times three times two times one. So that's 48. Nine factorial over three factorial times seven factorial. Now this has some reducing, because nine factorial is nine times seven times 6 times dot 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 continues on. In the denominator we have 3 times 2 times 1 times 7 times 6 times dot dot dot. So the 7 6 um, multiplied all the way to 1 is the same on the top right here and on the bottom. So those reduce out. So all we have left is 9 over 3 times 2 but again the 3 reduces with the 9 so we have 3 halves would be the result. So we can do some reducing, so we don't have to do all the multiplication of the factorial. Summation notation, or another way of looking at it is the sigma notation. So this symbol is here is the sigma, sigma sign, which means the summation of all the numbers, all the terms, I should say, from 1 to n. And then here would be the equation for the pattern. And so ai, i is the index of summation. So it's whatever variable you're using to define your pattern. N is the upper limit of the summation. So how big are you going to go in the terms? What term value? One is the lower limit. It's usually zero or one or the beginning value of your pattern. Uh, and so it's just representing of you adding together a bunch of terms of the pattern. And so for this example here, you look at the summation notation. We have a lower limit of 1, so we're starting from the first term, and we're adding all the way to the sixth term. And then the 3i minus 1 is the pattern. So we could actually find these numbers. So if we looked at like a1, so the first number in this pattern, you plug 1 in for i here, 3 minus 1 is 2. If I plugged in the second one, plugged in number 2, you plug 2 in here, 3 times 2 is 6, minus 1 is 5. And it continues on. So I'm going to plug 3 in. You have 9 minus 1, which is 8. 
plug in 4, 12 minus 1 is 11, plugged in 5, 15 minus 1 is 14, and you can see there's a pattern here. 2 to 5, 5 to 8, 8 to 11, which is just increasing by 3. Why is it increasing by 3? Because look at the pattern. This is a linear pattern where 3 is my slope. So it's the constant rate of change. So if I add 3, I should have 17 there. So these are the first 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 numbers in the pattern, and that's what we're asked to add together. So we just need to actually add these numbers together. And that's what the summation notation is asking us to do, is to add these numbers together. So if we do that, we should get 57. So some properties of summation. In this notation, you can look at our pattern here as just C, which means some kind of constant. So I look at the number 2. It just means you're, you're adding together the summation. You're adding together a bunch of 2s from 1 to n. So you're adding together dot, 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 uh, n amount an n amount of twos. And so a fast way of doing that is just multiplying n times the number of twos times two. The second one is you still have that constant here, but it's multiplied by an actual formula or a pattern. So we could also pull that constant out in front and do the summation of the rule and then multiply it by the constant afterwards. And we're going to use this one uh, fairly often more in chapter 11 than in this chapter, but we can pull that constant out to help us find the summation. Then 3 and 4 are very similar. If you're doing the summation of the sum of two patterns or the subtraction of two patterns, then you can find the summation or the um, subtraction of those two patterns. A series is another terminology or, or word describing the sum of a sequence or a pattern. So we have two kinds of series. We have a finite series, which is also called the partial sum. So you're only adding a finite amount of numbers, so part of the pattern. And we have an infinite series, which is adding together all the numbers in a series. And so the notation you would see here, here's the summation notation, and here's the other one. The only difference is your upper bound goes from n to infinity. Now the infinity, we can't add patterns that keep increasing because they're going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. But if we had a pattern that went down like this, like an exponential pattern, we added numbers as they kept becoming smaller and they're approaching a horizontal asymptote, then we can actually find the sum of that pattern. And so we'll talk more about that uh, in 8.3. So here's a partial summary, finite um, series where you're actually adding from 1 to 4 of this pattern. So again, you're just plugging the numbers 1 through 4 into this pattern. So I plug 1 in there, negative 1 to the first power times 2 times 1. So it's negative 1 times 2 or negative 2. I plug in 2, negative 1 squared, and then 2 times 2. So we're going to have 4 times a positive 1 or 4. I plug in 3, negative I plug in 3, negative 1 cubed, 2 times 3, so I have 6 times a negative 1, so negative 6. So you kind of see what's happening here with the pattern. We're increasing by 2, and then the signs are becoming opposite. So you, if you plugged in 4, you would have positive 8. So these are the four different numbers, and we just add them. Uh, so the summation is 2, or negative 2, plus 4, plus a negative 6, plus 8. If we do that, we have... Four. And that would be the partial sum. So one more thing, haha, is calculators. I'm going to go over how to find this in calculators. It kind of depends on the calculator you have. If you have the 84, the new operating systems, or if you have the old 83s, how you can do that. So I will show you that on the calculator tomorrow. Um, so we'll call.